be honest with the people. 100%. Tell them you're broke, man. Yeah. Tell them like, look, that's why I'm, I joined the business is because I, I see a better life. I see a better future. I see people something feel better. like they want to help yes, you. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like I was never afraid to, to, you know, once I started figuring out what to say and what to do, I would tell people, look, I'm 21. I really need your help. Would you give me 10 minutes just to show you what I'm doing? My man, Danielle, thank you so much for being on the show. What's going on, I man? I appreciate it, man. And it's a nice pad you got over here. Thank you. Yeah, thank so you, you. rented out for the day? Yeah, well, I, yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, just for one day, just though. For... And we only have like a few minutes. So <laughs> we, we, gotta, we gotta, gotta, we gotta, gotta wrap hurry, it up. Yeah. No, what's funny, guys, is like when I came in here, we were talking about how social media has uh, so many, I guess you can say, fake uh, profiles. Right. So he's like, yeah, I actually rented this house out. No, but real, <laughs> real stuff. I thank you for the invitation. I, I love the pad. I love the, it's, it's, it's interesting how I've realized a lot of these like, high performing entrepreneurs when you go to their houses they're usually like sedated they're they're like they're alone in their own area is there is there a reason to that like well i i i personally always wanted to live in a in a gated community because it was just safe you know okay. safer yeah and you know i grew up in a not so good neighborhood the first you know probably 10 years of my life and so uh saw a lot of things i probably shouldn't have saw mm. and so for me um, now, again, there's good and there's bad. You sure. Know, the good news is that you're safer. The bad news is you got a, a lot of pissed off people in this neighborhood, a lot of old people that really? are just not happy people. Look, I mean, you know, I, I look, I mean, and they say that all the time, right? I mean, is there that like are, a there thing are, there are people, well, they, they have associations. Uh, and they like everything so quiet. And, and me, we have big parties. We have tons of people over the all the time. Like this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we entertain. I sure. bought this house because I wanted to entertain. And of course, you know, the association president lives next door. And, you know, so oh, she wow. gives like, us Ah, shit damn, all the time. that sucks. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right next door. Well, hey, that's cool. No, I'm, I say because, like, I feel like you guys, your days are, like, so intense that you want to come home to a very peaceful area. I mean, I'm starting to understand that because right. when I, I, I love intensity. I, I literally like, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Cause like if, if, if things are slow at work, I, I, I completely, I shut off. I can't mm -hmm. like, I'm like, okay, some, I, something is wrong. It needs to revamp. So what I'm starting to realize is a lot of like, when we go interview people at their houses, they have houses like either in the middle of like nowhere or like completely alone in their own area. Or it's just like, they have a huge area. So like no one can bother them. Right. And I feel like it's like a thing to kind of well, I mean, for me, for me personally, I mean, at 28, I was telling you I was financially independent. And yeah. so I've been semi-retired. I'm 44 now. I've been semi-retired for a long, long time. And so for me, my life is not that intense. I'm not grinding every day. I'm not killing it every day. I'm not pushing, pushing, pushing every day um, because I built my life around kind of the things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like I like speaking. So I go to my office a couple of times a week and I speak and I teach and I coach and I train people on how to become successful. I Because I, I've obviously been very, very blessed to yeah. achieve a level of success. Yep. And so now it's like, it's my mission, man. I wanna teach people. I wanna make a difference in people's lives. That's great. So let's get into your, I wanna kinda touch real quick about your kind of past. You said mm -hmm. you were retired, half retired at 28. Right. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So tell me, I know I was reading a little bit about yourself. Like you kind of like, you went through a little bit of a tough time in your early twenties and then kind of like it scaled up. So. Take me back to, I guess, where it all started for you. Well, 21, I got a buddy of mine. His name was Pablo, and he was Pablo my, Escobar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pablo Escobar. <laughs> yep. And he was my best friend yeah. growing up, and we did everything together. And he tells me about this company. He's like, hey, man, you know, I'm going to go in this financial company, and we're going to, you know, get wealthy. And, you know, and of course, the first thing I do, you know, I tell him is that's bullshit. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, people like us ain't never going to make big money like that. You know, we never, I was making $7 an hour. I worked at Vaughn's grocery store. I worked at Subway. Mm. Um, I had little odds, you know, little odd and end jobs, you know, here and there. I you really said you grew up in anything. a weird neighborhood. So you were, you were like more of a, how was your family growing well, up? Well, my, my first 10 years, I grew up in El Monte, okay. California. Yeah. So, uh, and that was not so good neighborhood. Mm. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, gang related stuff. There was a lot of poverty, you know, and, you know, just seeing things. I mean, my parents, you know, 
difficult situation growing up. Um, they were, you know, they got divorced very young when I was very mm. young. And it was, uh, it was tough. I saw things that, you know, drugs, I saw alcohol, I saw, again, poverty mentality and lack of abundance mentality. And so, um, but then my mom remarried and then she married my stepfather and he took us a little bit closer out this way, which is, he took us to San Dimas, California. Mm, okay. In San Dimas is where I started to see a little bit of a better life. Um, you know, I saw people that had nice cars. Yeah. I saw people that had nicer things. I mean, we were in a nicer neighborhood. There wasn't bars on all the windows yeah, yeah, and things yeah. like that. So my mom getting a divorce really changed my life, transformed my life. I wouldn't be here today without that happening because she put me in a different environment. So growing up in that society, in that environment, I see some people who usually turn to it and then some who don't. Right. Uh, you, you came out of that. Right. What was like, is, was there something certain like that kind of made you stick to your morals and values to not get into that drugs and gang related activities? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, the, 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 the good news is I got out. Mm -hmm. The bad news is a lot of that came with me. Even in San Dimas, I was still a bad kid, got in a lot of trouble. Uh, me and the principal, we were tight, man. We, we knew each other first name basis. And, not uh, a good way. Not a good way. Yeah, not a good way. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and again, I was, I was out late at night. I was doing shit I shouldn't. I drank too much at a, a young age. Mm. Started drinking. I've, you know, I've done lots. Of, I've tried sure, lots sure. of things. And, uh, and I was, so I was on that path. Believe it or not, I was on that path. I was just telling, I just posted on my Instagram the other day uh, that I put, um, I showed a tape of Jack Canfield and I was, we were, you know, running the streets, being hoodlums and we used to go and try to open up doors of cars mm. and then we would steal whatever was in the car and, you know, we would find glasses or we would find change or whatever we could find, we would take. And, uh, and one night I grabbed a boom box radio. Now I was probably 14 years old at the time sure. and I grabbed a boom box radio and we ran. And we got back to the house and we opened up the tape and it was a tape by Jack Canfield. It was called Self-Esteem and Peak Performance. Wow, what a, what a coincidence. That was it, man. It was just crazy. Is that what changed everything Oh for my you? God, it just, I mean, well, not, not in one second. Sure, you but know? it kind of like started the but snowball effect. It started the whole yeah. process of me going, wait a minute, there's something better out there. And, and I remember in the tape, he said, you got to ask, 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 ask for what you want in your life. You know, the whole Aladdin factor, that, sure. that whole Aladdin factor was really based on that series of tapes that, that I had gotten a hold of. And it changed my life. It changed my thinking. Now, again, I was still a bad kid through my, you know, teenage years. And, and then, of course, at, at 21, I got into business. And so at that stage, I understand that everything around you was all about, you know, negativity. It was, right. it was negative. Right. So I, I can see why you fell into it. However, it always gets me so curious. Now that you are where you are today, looking back, what was life to you at that point? Like, what did you see about life? What, like, is that all you saw in front of you? Is that all like, did you not have certain goals in life? Did you not realize, wait, is this really it? Was well, that never a question that, you know, woke you out of it, snapped you out of it? I think I was just an environment of people, not that they were bad people. Um, you know, they weren't, we didn't kill people. We didn't go out and do crazy, crazy, you know, bad things to, to other people or anything like that. So the, 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 but the environment that I was in was an environment of, we'd go out and we'd party all the time. We partied all the time. We, we drank, we smoked, we did all kinds of crazy, you know, those type of crazy things. Mm -hmm. We stayed out real late. We slept in all day and it was just like, that was just accepted. There was no, and really my parents were not very strict on me. Okay. I kind of had an open, you know, there was a little bit of an open door where I got to do the things that I wanted to do. Yeah. And, uh, and so because of that, I had no goals written down. Nobody was pushing me. I mean, I, I, I did play sports, but nobody pushed me to play sports. Believe it or not, I was, uh, I, I even did extra work for a little while. So I was in the movie Pretty Woman. Mm. Um, I was uh, in all kinds of different TV shows and just extra work though, never like So I talk. guess you were just living it kind of day by day. It was just day by day. I was just trying to figure Played out what I liked, sense. but nobody, but this is the challenge though. Nobody, not to blame anybody. I'm, I don't never like to blame anybody, but nobody pushed me, man. I mean, nobody, you were 14. I know, but yeah. at 14, if somebody would have guided me, like pushed me into something, I think that maybe I would have gotten 
maybe I wouldn't have gone through some of those rough years as, as a teenager. Sure. So is there like a certain event that you can recall that kind of lit the fire inside of you and said, that's it, I'm cutting it off? Or was it like a sequence of events? Well, there was. There, there was the first thing that came to my mind. And um, hopefully my kids are not uh, listening to this podcast, but you know, shut it off. Yeah, guys. shut it off now. But um, <laughs> but no, I, I, I was, you know, I was probably 20 years old and I remember this day and I was with another one of my buddies and it was like, and I'd not been working at the time. I think I just got, um, cause I, I played baseball at Mount San Jacinto College out in Hemet and I was playing mm -hmm. baseball and I hurt my knee real bad. And so I didn't play, I couldn't play baseball anymore. My baseball career was done. I was, it was over. Came back home, I was living at home in my parents' uh, converted uh, attic bedroom. And, and, I, uh, and, and, and I remember wasting the whole day partying with one of my buddies and he was down the street, literally like, two, three, four, five houses down. And we were doing just, you know, we were smoking and we were drinking and we were wasting the day. And I just, and that night I came home and, and I, I didn't really feel good about myself. I felt a lot of guilt. Hmm. Uh, it was a lot of guilt. I felt very, very guilty about, like I felt like God gave me a, a you know, a great life, Wake a better up. life, you know? Yeah. And, and I was wasting that shit, man. And I was so tired of wasting my life away. I said, fuck it, man. I got to do something different. Buddy Pablo called me up forever. Thank Pablo for what he did to my life by getting me into business, got into business and the rest is history. That's interesting. So I want to touch into a subject that I don't think many people talk about enough. Where does God come into this? Well, I mean, I've always, I'm, I'm not a real religious guy. I don't, yeah. um, you know, I do go to church, but I don't go every single Sunday. Um, I, I do believe that that organized religion is um, there's a lot of challenges that I have with organized religion. Mm -hmm. You know, they make you feel bad if you don't go to, to, to church. Sure. And I feel like, you know, I, I've been praying ever since I was a young kid. I pray. I pray to God every single day, every single night. I always give thanks to God for our blessings that we've had in our life. So there's no doubt about it. God has played a major, major role in guiding me. I, you know, one of the things that I, I have a little dream video that I watch at night before I go to bed. And, and it says that, that um, you know, my God guides me every single day. Mm -hmm. And so I allow him to feed into me and guide me to the things that I need to be doing. That's and and I, I try to listen the best I can. I'm not sure. perfect. I make a lot of mistakes still, but I try my best to, to be as, um, you know, as faithful as possible. I say that because I 100% I, I believe in it dearly that uh, a big percentage of business success comes down to faith. Right, right. Like there's this saying, so I'm Middle Eastern, there's a saying in Arabic that says, do what you can do and leave the, leave the rest up to the one who controls it all. Right, right. You know, and so like, you know, you hustle, you hustle, you hustle, you grind, but at the end of the day, can you really control everything? Right. You can't. Yeah. And that's where stress comes from. Like a lot of anxiety and stress I realize come dawns upon me when I try to control every single thing exactly. that's happening. Oh, totally. And that's impossible. So a lot of like successful entrepreneurs like you have this, um, whether religious or not, but they have this some sort of faith in a bigger power in a in a great something greater than them. So that kind of takes me to my next question. 21 to 27, 28, a lot changed. And I want to, I want to, I want to kind of dig into now like dreamland a little bit, right? Obviously before you had really no why to everything that you were doing from 21 to 27, 28, something snapped. Yeah. What was that? Why that made you go, okay, that's it. I'm going to wake up every day and I'm going to grind my butt off until I get to a place where I want to be. I, I think it, it had a lot to do with me believing that I could do it too. Like I saw these guys. I remember the first night I ever took a look at my opportunity basically i mean mm -hmm. the the opportunity they were giving me and i saw this guy and he was making about four hundred thousand dollars at the time and he was like an ex uh grocery store manager and i looked at him and he's talking about a life of freedom and choices and options and for some reason i, I didn't i wasn't like like starstruck or anything like that. I looked at him as just a human being. Yeah. And I said, he's just a dude, you know, he's just a guy. <laughs> like, what the, f you know, yeah, like. But like, to you making seven bucks an hour or 400 grand well, is like. It was a big deal, yeah. but it was a big deal, but I didn't, but I, but I, but what really changed my thinking was the fact that I, I really felt like, like he puts his pants on like I do. 
Like he's not better than me. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Like I had this no, little definitely. chip. Like like yeah. I'm I'm cap- like so what I did though is I believed that if I learned what he knew, you can apply it and do the I same thing. I could get what he's got. Sure. Like okay. just give me your knowledge. Logical man. concept. That's yeah. it. And I so I stole every bit of knowledge that I could get from the dude. Asked him a lot of questions. Spent a lot of time with them. You know, picked his brain. You know, and found other mentors that totally changed my thinking, but I was open for it. Like I I had no ego, man. You were coachable. I I was coachable. That's it. it. I had no ego, man. Like ego, I I feel like it, it, it'll keep you broke, man. Dude, ego is a killer. It'll kill you in business, in life, man. I mean, if you, if you, if you allow your ego to drive you, it's pretty much allowing your emotions to drive you. And when you're emotional while running a business, you might as well just close shop. That's it. File chapter 11, just leave. I I agree, man. I agree. (laughs) So uh, let's talk about mentorship for a bit, right? You kind of you kind of dug into that. A lot of I feel like so many people overthink things a lot in business. How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do this? And I don't. I actually had a recent conversation on one of our last podcasts with Patrick Bet David, and he called me out on it. And he was like, "You focus too much on the how to, brother. Right, right. Like if you know your why and what you're doing, things just like right. happen." So when it comes to mentorship, I I, I know like. Well, I want to challenge that real quick. Okay, just, go just, ahead. I want to challenge Patrick, that. Patrick, if you're watching yeah, this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I want to challenge that, Patrick. And I do have a lot of respect for him. Good dude. Yeah. Um, but but I want to challenge that because I believe yeah. the reason why most people fail is because they don't know their shit. They don't know their shit. They don't agree? know how. Look, look. I, I believe the why is very important. I, I'm not yeah. at all I mean, telling you had you a why. chip on your shoulder. But I'm telling you, man, I, I dude, I mastered my shit, man. I mean, hundred percent. But where did it start from? Well, it started from the why. Yeah. The why is important, very, very important, because that's going to get you moving. Mm-hmm. But I think, man, if you don't, because I just think there's a lot of people that they're winging it. They're like, well, I know my why, man, and I'm going to hustle, and I'm going to grind, and I'm going to go for it. But they don't know how to overcome objections. They you don't see, know how the, to communicate with The thing with, with that is, I go back to how social media is nowadays. That's people it. are so big on us. I got a DM I'm from this guy two me. weeks ago, and you know what he says? He's like, "Yo, what's up?" I'm like, "Hey, how you doing? How's life?" You know, random people just reach out, and he's like, "Oh, I just finished an all nighter." I'm like, "Okay, yeah." Like, what do you want me to do? Give you a dollar? Congratulations, man. Like, it's like people are like talking about this hustle life as if it's like it's cool, right? You know, and all of a sudden, entrepreneurship is like this, like token word i'm an entrepreneur i don't even like calling myself an entrepreneur bro because like i i dead ass believe that i was born and raised in a very business mindset and to me working for somebody it's just it's a no-no like i i know i'm up to something big and i know i have something to prove and show the world and i'm gonna do it right so to me it's not about i don't like when i talk about like people call like hey what do you do i'm like i just i just do my thing right you know but what he was saying was the how-to does matter. It's that it comes from the why. Right. It, the root starts from of the why. Course, of course. Because if you have a chip course. on your shoulder, you're going to wake up every day and figure it out. Right. 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 The, yeah. the problem with like the people that talk like that is that their why, in my opinion, aren't big enough. Right. It's not, it's not big enough to a point when objections and issues and tribulations happen. They're like, you know what? My why is huge. I'm going to keep... I'm gonna keep smacking on it, right. right? I mean, but but what are they smacking on? That's the problem, there's right? No, there's they're, no they're, guidance. They're, there's they're, no. they're just they're they're like they're they're drowning themselves in just motivation. Yes, right. Yes. That's it. Yes. And so yes. they they wake up with this great why and this great feeling of. But see, look, what bought this house here is the is the was the work. results, yeah. man. Was yeah. the results mm-hmm. was me sitting across the kitchen table, and knowing the words and knowing how to communicate properly to that client to get that client to say yes yeah. and write me a check. Yeah. That's it. That's what that's what put me in this house. It comes today. from experience and knowledge. Obviously mentorship is that's huge. It. I mean, I love mentorship for one reason. You get someone who's done it, that's mentors it. you, all of a sudden you like you advance your career so much faster. It's like a life hack. Oh, totally. You know? Totally. You know, you know Gary Vee, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. So what's interesting is he has this uh, 4D consulting. Mm-hmm. Have you have you seen those uh-huh. videos? Mm-hmm. Uh, so his regular motivation videos get millions of views. And then he has this two hour video that's super tactical. He posts them, I think once every two weeks uh-huh. where he sits with small businesses and he consults them on how to build their business. Right. It's two hours. Yeah. He gets about 60 to 70,000 views on that video. That's crazy. Versus man. a million, two million. And I'm thinking to myself, crazy. dude, compare, like that content is great to listen to maybe on a morning that you're not feeling it, but the real stuff, is right here. That's it. Like he's teaching you how to get clients, how to build a business, how to strategically make money. And people are like, nope, I don't want to listen to this. Huge. This doesn't matter. So you're a big guy on financial independence, right? Yeah, totally. You're you're also like a business coach and you do all of that, that cool stuff. I I, want to, 
I feel like a lot of Instagram and social media has ruined the way coaches are looked upon. Right. So have you dealt with people that are being like people that are super skeptical about like, oh, I'm a coach. Well, oh yeah, everyone says he's a coach. How mm-hmm. can you help me? Well, I mean, for me, it's a little bit different because I, I started in this game after I made it. Okay. After I became financially independent, I, I think I think the toughest thing for a lot of coaches out there is the fact that they have never made it big themselves, and they're trying so, to coach. And they're trying to coach people. Yeah, and, and uh, it's like that's scary to me. Like I, I'm, I mean, I you know I don't necessarily say they shouldn't do it, but I think that's very no, I difficult. They, I, I say they shouldn't. That's that's very yeah. difficult to do. Well, you know, I mean, there might be stuff that they went to certification programs. I disagree. Or they might, it's might like, be able to teach you some different things. Did you go to school? I, I didn't. I didn't go to college. Yeah. Well, I went to college for a little while okay. and then I ended up. I, know, I dropped out for years. one reason. Yeah. I sat in front of a professor who makes 50 grand a year teaching right. me how to run a business. That's it. That's and I'm it. like, Smartest uh, thing you ever did. Doesn't make sense, you know. Like, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't follow it. I don't. Yeah. I don't get it. You know, maybe for chemistry, science, that thing, cool. It's like book stuff. Great. But especially entrepreneurship and business, it's evolving so fast right. and so quick that something I might learn from you today may not be applicable right, tomorrow. Right, right, you know. Right. So, financial. De- what is what is financial dependence for you? Is there like a number? Is there like a limit that you reach? Like- it, it, it really is. It's cash flow, man. I mean, it's it's when you have enough cash flow to take care of every one of your bills and you have plenty of leftover, um, that's financial independence, man. That's freedom. That's choices. I mean, I get up every single day. If I want to work, I work. If I don't want to work, I don't work. Every single day. The only reason why I'm doing this podcast, I'm doing you know, my own podcast, uh, Wealth on the Beach podcast. Yeah. The only reason why I'm doing that stuff is because I want to make a difference. There's something and in my can. soul. Yes, yeah. there's something that drives me. It's always driven me because even in my own company, I've spoke all over the, the country teaching and coaching and training. And by the way, for free. Like I've never been paid to speak for my company across the country and uh, and Canada as well. And I've done that for 20 years for free. Yeah. And that's what drives me. And the reason why I do it is because I want to make a difference. And um, But that's financial freedom for me is to be able to do the shit that I want to do because I want to do it. Let's get a bit more tactical here yeah. because I, a lot, I think I get a little confused when people talk about that. When you say pay bills, I mean, yeah. my bills, let's say are $10,000, right? right? Okay, but if I only have ten thousand dollars, I'm broke. That's it, right? That's it, of course. So, what is financial independence? Is it like, is there a certain number of passive income? Well, let, let is me there just a certain goal or digit that you hit. Well, I mean, no, I mean, you know, I make a hundred thousand dollars a month, whether I get out of bed or not, and so, and my my bills are probably in the range of maybe thirty grand a month or something like that. Okay. Of what I actually need. I mean, my mortgage on this house. I mean, you you saw this house this is a multi multi million dollar home. My mortgage is eighteen hundred dollars because it's almost paid off. I only owe like three hundred and fifty grand on it. Okay. So um, financial independence is having no debt. I have virtually no debt. I, I do own a building, a commercial building in Ontario. Uh, it's probably about I could probably get one six, one seven for it, and uh, I think I owe four hundred thousand or something like that. Okay. Um, so to me, like when you have no debt and and there's money have, still coming you have, in. You have seventy thousand dollars now. Granted, there's some taxes in there, and but you know, you know, fifty plus thousand dollars a month in free cash flow in whatever you want to do with it. I mean, we're talking. You know, this is some serious financial freedom. Mm-hmm. Now, if I was maybe more of a grinder, and I said, you know what, I want to make another hundred thousand dollars a month. I got to go back out in the field. I got to go across the kitchen table. I got to go grind it and go recruit more people and train more people and do all that. And if I want to do that, I can go do that. I have every day I get up, I can choose if I want to go do that or not. Hmm. But that's my, this is my reality today. And and again, I know it's a little bit counter culture because I know it's fun to say that, man, we're grinding it 24 seven. You know, a lot of people, they, that, that's what they want me to say. Now I'm not saying you do, but I I know that that's society today, that that's like a, but, but it doesn't have to be that way. You could build a life, in my opinion, you could build a life where, you know, you're bringing in 20 grand a month and your, your bills are 10 grand. You got got 10 grand a month to to travel. Imagine Mm -hmm. taking a $10,000 vacation every single month of your life. Right. That, I mean, I probably travel, 
maybe you know once at least every other month i go on some sort of adventure once every other month and if that's the way you want to live then that's the way you want to live that's it yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. exactly so it's not right or wrong i don't and look there might be a time and and a little my my life is the way it is too because i have a 17 year old and i have a 13 year old so my life's a little bit different now we try to out. spend more time with them. Exactly. In a sense, yeah. yeah, I'm giving them my life right now. You know that's interesting that you, you say know? that because I feel like you do. You, do you do that because you know how it is to not have a stable family? Uh, a little bit. I, I think probably there 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 is that that you know sense of I want to be a great dad because yeah. I didn't necessarily have the the greatest. Mm -hmm. Not that he was a bad dude. I love my pop. I have a pop, and I have a stepdad, a a dad that helped to raise us, um, but you know, there was a lot of things and there was a lot of times where, you know, he would say, hey, I'm going to pick you up on Saturday morning and I'd be on the corner waiting for him to pick me up and he wouldn't be there. Yeah. So like if you ask my kids right now, does dad do what he says he's going to do? It's one thousand percent. Integrity like is there. Oh, the integrity is yeah. like it's so important to me. If I tell you I'm going to do something. You know, you said you were coming out here today and we wanted to make sure everything was right. And, you know, of course, we got the gardener in the back. I don't know that he's, I don't know yeah. that he was scheduled at the Stop. right time. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it's not too crazy. Oh, good, oh, good, yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but I, I just, I want to be a great dad, man. I mean, I want to tuck my kids in. I, I, you know, when my kids all through their life, I always read to them before Dude, and that's great. And, and, I respect that you about know. you because you're willing to say that. Like there's no, as you said, like culture nowadays is like all about the hustle. Like, yeah. Gotta do this, gotta. I'm like, bro, like if a lot of people, because I have this really big vision for my company. Yeah. I'm kind of the exact opposite. Of yeah. Yeah. Right now. At least. Yeah. For right yeah. now. But for I right was now. like you. Yeah. Sure. You know, sure. A lot sure. of years it's ago. We were the same. Yeah. 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 Oh, totally. Yeah. Man. Sure. Totally. I, I, sure. And it's like right now, like all I care about is the grind. That's, That's it. it. Like, and the thing is, Love I it. say that I'm like, hey, listen, I don't want to hang out. I don't want to go out. I just want to hustle. Love that. You know, but I might get to a point where, you know, tomorrow I might wake up and change my media company to a chocolate factory. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> well, well, let do me, whatever it is I want to do. Let me just make sure that you're clear, man. For that seven years of my life, you couldn't catch me doing anything. No, I, bet. I didn't party, I didn't go out, I didn't hang out, I didn't go on vacations. I was driving a $10,000 Maxima, purple Maxima, sure. not a best looking car. Sure. And I was making 300,000 a year just because I was saving, I was saving, I was investing, saving, saving, investing, investing into my company, doing anything that I can do to make sure that I could you know, save a million bucks because that was my goal. Let's at talk that about time. savings for a second. I was yeah. actually going to get into yeah. that. You're like read my mind. Yeah. Um, investments, or I don't believe in re getting the, the the money rotten in your bank account. Yeah, I think no. it's stupid. I think if if money's sitting in your bank account, what the hell's the point of it? Yeah. So, at what stage do you believe people should start investing into things? So let's say like, okay, I mean, is there? And I I'm I'm really right trying now. to I'm trying to dig tactical yeah, because yeah, like yeah. you know, yeah. let's say you just started a startup, yeah. right? My investments right now, all my money's dumping into the startup. Absolutely. So I don't I don't keep a single penny for anything else. Right. When did your portfolio start to in like expand? Because I know you said you do other investments well, now. So like so what's what's really advantageous about the the company that I've built yeah. is the fact I have virtually no overhead. That's amazing. And yeah. I virtually never had any overhead. I mean, my office expense, I mean, I think, you know, at one time, I mean, I was renting out some different offices. So my office was, expense was almost nothing because I had offices within the building that hmm. I was renting out. So that was all covered. Um, and then, uh, you know, I got my cell phone, I got my car, um, maybe some awards, maybe some dinners that I'm going to take some of my agents out to, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but I never advertised. Not one advertisement in 23 years. Um, I, I mean, I bought chairs at my office. I, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah, my yeah. overhead was I nothing. Get it. I get nothing. it. Nothing. Yeah. So it's like every dime I had, I was putting it into mutual funds. I was putting in individual stocks that I would follow and invest into. Um, you know, how, had a couple little outside ventures a long time ago and, and, uh, you know, just those type of things is, is, is what I did. And so, but I got really good at knowing 
what was happening in the market. I mean, there was years where I was making 100% return on my money. Now, I, I can't get, you know, I would never guarantee anybody that you're going to get 100%, 100% return. But what there were years. In that, man? Well, I mean, they were mutual fund yeah, investments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, dot com sure, era. The dot com there was a <laughs> lot of investments that were doing really, yeah. really well. And I was kind of a part of that. That was that was a few of those years that had helped me grow my net worth pretty fast. You know what I love about you? Self-awareness. You're very self-aware of who you are, what you want, what you like, and you live your life on your own needs. I mean, I think that's a beautiful thing about the American system. It allows you to do that. Oh, totally. totally. People nowadays, though, are so caught up with looking at someone else's chapter 20 that's it. and comparing it with their chapter one, and they're like, oh my God, it's so fucking accomplished. I'm like, dude, listen, if you want to make 50 grand a year and that makes you happy, that's it. Go freaking do it. Exactly. But totally. if you, but, but like, stick to it. Right. Don't talk, 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 and don't do anything. Right. But if you're happy making $500 million a year, then right. go freaking figure it out. But you also Absolutely. need to understand that the bigger you go, the more the hustle, the more right, the grind. Right, right. You are like, I'm going to get here and I'm just going to chill. Yeah. yeah. I, lo- I love that. Like, there's well, yeah, nothing. And, and, and let me just, and I do want to be clear. I mean, I'm obviously still building my business oh, yeah, as yeah. I go. And I'm always looking for great people. I'm always looking to train people and teach people and things like that. But it's just a different mindset. It's, a, it's like when you, when you figure out what you want, I wanted financial freedom. I love to travel. I've been to South Africa, I've been to Brazil, I've been to, you know, all throughout Canada, all throughout the United States, I've been to Italy and Europe and, you know, just, I've been all over the place. And, but that's what I wanted to do. And I didn't want anybody, I didn't want to have to call my boss and say, man, can I get the day off? That was the dream for me, man. That's what fired me up every and that's day. Cool, that's cool, you what did it. Took me, yeah. Like, we I'm not, I'm not, like for everybody that's watching, guys, he's, he, he does a lot of things. If you want to check him out on social media, he's very active. So, like, you're still doing your thing. Oh, of course. But what man. I'm telling you is that I respect about you is that you're like, you know, you you said something, you set out to it, you hustled till you got there, and now you're in a stage where you can do whatever you want. That's it. Right? Some people love hustling till the day they die. I mean, right. we have Middle Eastern culture, we, we, we retirement to us is like, uh, doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, <laughs> it does, totally, totally. You know, it's like, so, like, me growing up, my dad's like 50, 54 now, right. and he still hustles, like, yeah. on daily, like, he's 20. And and, and and look, I mean, the 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 grind and the hustle to me versus somebody else is different. Just, just different. Sure. So, because, because, like, for me, my grind and my hustle today is me doing a podcast, yeah, me, yeah, yeah. me spreading going, knowledge, doing a meeting, doing, yeah. spreading knowledge, because that's the progress that I'm making. Like, cause I, I got to, I got to 28 and I'm like, I can't retire. I'm not going to retire. I mean, I never fully retired, but I just had to keep on making progress. Cause I believe progress is what equals happiness. It's the progress mm. of things. And that's why, by the way, most people in America and uh, Canada, they're depressed, man. Cause they're not, they're not progressing. Life. They're not progressing, man. They stagnant. Hate, they're, they're just, Super. They're, yeah. they're, they're pissed off because they're in traffic right now, man. They're flipping somebody off. They're <laughs> they're upset because they're making the same amount of money that they made five years ago. They live in the same dang neighborhood. It's a bad neighborhood. They hate their neighbors. It's loud. It's, you know, people are mean. Uh, there's crime. There's, you know, poverty mentality. And I never understood I, that, I by just, the way. I don't get how somebody, I would much rather eat crap for years. Yes and make a dollar. Right. Then go out there and make 50 grand for five years and not progress. Oh my God. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just, it doesn't, it blows my mind. Cause to me, even if I made a dollar today and then tomorrow I made $2, even if though it's just a dollar, right. I just changed my amount of money. To me, that's like, whoa, check me out. You know what that's I mean? It. And like- And people, people don't realize too that like when they're stuck in those neighborhoods, they can get out. Like people stay in neighborhoods for 40 years and they don't get out. The ones with the bars on the windows. And it's like, wait a minute, it's not that difficult to get out. You just gotta find a coach, find a mentor, find somebody that'll teach you. I, I had a guy, he Instagrammed me this morning, and he's like, hey man, you know, can you give me some advice and you know, give me some mentorship and all that kind of stuff? I said, hey man, I said on a scale from one to 10, uh, how badly do you wanna change your life? I told him just like that, I yeah. text him, you know, and he said, and he said, oh man, 10 unbelievable i want to go 10 and and i said well i own a financial services company um why don't you check this out and this out and if you feel like we're a fit maybe you go into business with me and i'll mentor you i'll take you under my wing i'll teach you everything i know and he goes ah, i don't think i want to go into that type of business and so mm-hmm. it's like it's like he didn't want to change his life that bad you know yeah, what yeah, i mean yeah. and so because he was struggling as a waiter right now 
So people have to eat shit for a little while it's ego. until it's ego. it's ego. That's why he's broke. It's ego, it's ego man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I per, I'm I'm 21, dude. Yeah. So I deal with this on a daily. Like I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something about myself that I grew up in a, I guess you could say higher middle class family. Yeah. Where I had everything, but not really. You know what I mean? Like I could go out to Javier's on once a week. Right. You know, I can't do it daily. I, I like it was kind of like it's weird. I actually think I tell people a lot that I actually think middle class is a curse because Ed Milet speaks about this because right. you have it. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll be honest with you. Worst case scenario, I can go back to my 5,000 square foot home and that's, relax. that's worst case exactly. scenario. So I was blessed growing up in a family that I had it all. But then I also realized that, wait, is this and it's interesting because that's why I think my drive doesn't come from I get yes it is financially speaking because I want to set my own life up I don't want to rely on my parents money but most of it is the is is what is it that I'm out there to accomplish right. and what I'm out there to change and that's why this podcast started and I dealt with a lot because at 16 I my first car was a BMW my second car was Infiniti my third car was like a hundred thousand dollar Jaguar and right now I got my fourth car it's a Camry going from that to this I, I swear to God man it took me I literally didn't have a car for three months because I couldn't handle it. I was like, there's no way I can, because I was, I was 19, you know, ego high as hell. I just started the whole like business, I guess, adventure. And I'm thinking to myself, fudge, I really have to like watch my money now. And like, man, I'm like not, I'm not relying on my dad's money anymore. So I'm like, I got nothing, right? right? right nothing right. in my name. Yeah, he's not going to cut you a check every yeah, month or five grand a month <laughs> so you can live wherever you want. I don't want you him gotta to. You got to make money, yeah, right? Yeah, I honestly don't want him to. I mean, he, he, till today, he yeah. tells me, hey, if you need anything, yeah, of course, I'm here. Of course. But I still try not to. I'm like, no, no, I don't need it. And so it, it took me two and a half to three months to finally make the decision of, you know what? I, I have to just, and it's so funny because I look at other people and I'm like, man, I am such an a-hole. I'm not grateful for what I got. Like a Camry to some people is like heaven. Like I have a, I have a, it's a new car. It's not like I got a used one. It's a new Camry. It's a new Camry, <laughs> red interior. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty pimped out, you know? And I'm like, I'm like, I, I, it took me that long to make this decision. You know, it's like almost a $400 payment. And I'm still thinking to myself that this is like, in my head, I was like, this isn't cool. And I'm like, what the hell? Like it really took a good minute thankfully now i've kind of overcome that you know and i understand that i'm very aware of the ego 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 side of me and i was like imagine that i kept that and imagine that i allowed that to drive my decisions i would i'd be nowhere because even any penny i would get i'd just go spend it on making sure i look good mm-hmm. and it's very interesting because i was i was on instagram the other day and there was a picture of jay-z where when he was worth like a hundred grand versus when he's worth now like six, seven hundred million dollars. In the in the picture of him worth a hundred K, he had a bunch of jewelry, diamond chains, and at six hundred million, he's wearing like just a shirt, right. jeans, it, just chilling, kicking back. So ego, guys, whoever's watching, it's a it's a killer. It's a killer, man. It'll, it's it'll a wipe you out, man. It'll kill you. Yeah, like, it will. It'll, it will. What are what are some tips on awareness? I think self awareness is very key, but a lot of people don't even know what they don't know. Right. Right. And so it's like. It's this weird concept of that you know what you know and you know what you don't know. So, for example, like, you know that, I don't know, like, do you know how to, is there something that you don't know you can't do? Well, I, mean, I can't fix a car. Okay, cool. So, you know you can't fix a car, but yeah. then there's a lot of things that you don't know you don't know. So, that kind of knowledge is, I believe, is what gives you that self-awareness if you go out there and seek it. Any key tips on, for somebody who's just starting, how to really go out there, build their network and get somebody, bring somebody enough value that's, you know, really successful to kind of mentor them, put them under their wing and have them understand and start learning? Well, I, I think I think you have to seek out the mentor. I mean, early on in my life, I found the mentor. Mm. Find out what kind of business do you want to be in. Maybe this guy was self-aware enough to go, hey, I don't want to be in the financial business with this guy or whatever. And that's, and God bless him. That's cool. I, I said, I said, right on. I wasn't upset with him. I said, right on. God bless you, man. I hope, you know, you make your dreams come true. And, uh, but, but I knew, look, I knew from an early age that it didn't matter what I was doing. Yeah. I wanted I wanted to become financially independent, and I felt like this was my chance. This was finally, you know, the stars aligned. You know, everything was was right, and this was my chance, and I wasn't gonna blow it. And so I was aware, very aware, that you know maybe I wasn't the smartest guy. I, I, I was never a real good student. I'm a very slow reader. Um, I'm not good at math. Uh, there, there was a lot of you know things that I knew I wasn't good at. So guess what? I, I figured out that computers made math a lot easier. 
I figured out that um, there was mentors that were going to tell me shit that I didn't know, yeah. so I could know it, right? I, I remember getting a, 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 a whole set of tapes. This is how long ago this was. They were cassette tapes mm -hmm. of Tom Hopkins. I had my $4,000, um, not as good as your Camry, all right, at, at 21. <laughs> uh, I had a $4,000 yeah, pickup yeah. truck. It was a sure. maroon pickup truck with no air conditioning. Yeah. Bet you your Camry has air conditioning. It has AC, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And I had no air conditioning. And we, and I'm telling you, man, I knew that I played those tape cassettes every single day because I was aware that I didn't know those things. And I had to learn how to communicate properly. I, I probably talked like a 21 year old back then, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I knew that I was, because I'm in the financial business, I knew that I was gonna have to talk to older people. Um, you know, I made sure I dressed right every day. I always had a polo shirt on. I always had a nice pants on, nice shoes on every day. Not, not in a full, you know, you know, three piece no, I suit or not. In your space. But I knew. Yeah, you exactly. That was that. my space. I'm in the media space. It's all about oh, cash. Oh, yeah. All no, stuff. It's, yeah. it's all good, man. I mean, but uh, but in that, you know, at 21, though, yeah. in my business at that moment, because again, that was a lot of years ago, too. That was 20 it. plus years yeah. ago. I knew. You had to make up I, for the age by the, exactly. by the way you presented exactly. yourself. Exactly. Yep. In, instead of thinking that I'm just going to just wing it and just figure it out along the way, I had to learn what these other successful people were doing mm. and they were dressing right sure. and they knew how to communicate right and so i mastered it so i want to ask you something yeah. throughout the journey of you growing financially did you ever feel like you were kind of losing track or losing sight of the vision uh, or losing sight of the goals i mean i, I the reason why i'm asking is because i'm personally dealing with that yeah, right now yeah. where i'm kind of in the rust of the startup world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where i'm doing so much that sometimes i'm like yo i'm not even like my dreams are kind of hazy. Like it's like, um, cause there's a lot of work and things are progressing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I, 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 I've caught myself recently to start to realize that I'm like, whoa, whoa I'm, I'm actually sort of winging it right now. Like, right, right, right. even though I'm very, I'm very, I'm a very like um, integral guy. I like to really be focused and scheduled organized. and like organized. Yeah, but sometimes I feel as if I can lose focus very easily. Right. And it's not because of the temptations outside. It's actually because of how much is going on inside. Right. Has, did that ever happen to you? And if it- Totally, totally. How'd you deal with that? Dude, I mean, you know, I, I number one is that I was 21 years old uh. playing in a game where everybody else was 40. Minimum. So yeah, nobody yeah. wanted to listen to me, right? So I'm just <laughs> going and going and people are telling who's me, this no, kid? Yeah. who's this little kid yeah. over here? I'm recruited, I, I recruited, you know, people that lived in like real homes yeah, and I'm yeah, like yeah. living in my mom's, you know, sure, upstairs yeah, yeah, little yeah. bedroom up there. and. And and I'm feeling like shit, man. I mean, I remember Old going to nice cars, and you're like, I'm, I'm driving a freaking pickup <laughs> truck, you know, feeling like dirt, man. And and I'm and then I I drive my little pickup truck, and I end up in some house that looks like this house, you know. And you're like, this guy I'm gonna park the car across the street so he doesn't see me. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I and it was so so hard in the beginning. Sure. To gain credibility. I mean, I remember, you know, a couple of things that I did uh, uh, early on because we didn't have social media back then, but I was aware enough that having a presence was important. So I went to the, the Citrus College uh, newspaper department mm -hmm. and I said, how would you like to write a, a paper about me and uh, an article about me? And I made them write an article about me. And I carried that article around All everywhere, around. just showing people that I was out there. Out there. And, yeah. I, and I went, you know, to the Sandy Miss newspaper. I was like, can I write an article? And I wrote a little, like a little blog Attention article. Key, Attention, Attention is key. Attention was key. I yeah, knew yeah, yeah. that from the get go. I yeah, knew that's, that. That's really smart. And, and that was, and again, zero social media. That was probably in 1996 when I did that. And that's, by the way, just to, just to dig in on that, you guys back then, that was hustle. Hey, what, dude, I had maps. Dude, I had to yeah, actually get to somebody's hustle. house in a map. Nowadays, when someone tells me I don't know how to run a business, I'm like, bro, Google. <laughs> exactly. What exactly. are you talking about? YouTube. We had no Google. Instagram, dude. Twitter, Snapchat. What are you talking about? You know how to run a business. That's I'm it, like, you it. can literally YouTube how to make a hundred grand a year. Boom, a hundred million results. I know. And just start listening. Dude. Back then you guys had to like Look, phone we, books we and had like- had no cell phone. Yeah, so yeah. I would go to this phone booth. You said like it, mails or something like, like that? Well, to like confirm an appointment and things like that. <laughs> and then I would call them. If it was too far away, I would call them. Are you still gonna be there? Are you sure you're gonna be there? Like now we never confirm our appointments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you know, you know it's, it's happening. Cause we know we're gonna be there or, and of course we have cell phones. So if something crazy happens. 
But I just, I'm just telling, man. I mean, and again, it's not like I walked uphill in the snow, bare feet or anything like that. But I just, you know, I just know that if you want something bad enough, you will You'll figure do it out. Whatever mm-hmm. it can takes yeah. to go get whatever it is that you want. And that's what I did. It's grit. It's grit, it's man. It's grit. Massive grit. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I feel like technology is creating a lot of, uh, I'm going to get hate for this, feminine kind of guys, oh, like oh, people totally. who don't have grit. They're right, like, right. oh, we can have it all in the thumb of our hands. We're just not going to do anything about Texting it. Texting will kill your business. I believe in the sales business, Texting is killing people's business because, and again, I love texting. I text a lot. I'm, yeah. I'm, I text everybody every day, but you still have to have that human contact with people. You know, that's why what you guys are doing is so awesome. I mean, you guys, I think, are stepping up the game in podcasting, right? Because you'll actually go fly to go see the guy, yeah. you know, whatever, you know, to interview somebody. I think that's you came key. to some you came to my house that's here key, today, right? It's like a Zoom interview first off. Forget the quality. Like yeah, quality. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm like sure quality like I I guess you could figure out, but then I'm like I want to get to know the person. That's it. That's like, it. hello. Like, I'm not just going to interview you and say bye, just like it's someone I knew. Yeah. Everybody we've interviewed till today, I'm in touch with. That's, that's either I'm helping them out, we're doing something together, mm-hmm. we're grinding together, we're hustling together. It's my network now. That's it. Like, that's they become it. homies. That's it. You know, that's and it. it's like, I, I, to me, it's so interesting because I, I feel like people don't use common sense. That's it. They don't. Like, I, when I first started the business, I'm like, okay, put ego aside. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but my formula is the following. First, you put your ego aside. Second, you decide that I'm going to be coachable no matter what. Third, you make sure to put yourself in a room where you're literally the dumbest guy. And then fourth, you accept the fact that you're the dumbest guy. Right, right. But if you put your ego aside, the fourth part is very easy. Who cares, man? I, yeah, I just like, care about getting and, rich, man. I and mean, then whoa, fifth, cares? which is a lot of people are really, really hard to do this nowadays, especially on social media, is you accept where you are. Right. And you own it. Like, yeah, I drive a crappy car. Right. Yeah, I am broke. Help me. So what? You know what's interesting? Most of the people I've met, I've I, we've actually, I mean, I, first off, I hate boasting, so I'm not using this as a way to boast, but I mean, the fact that we even got like Patrick and stuff like that on the show mm-hmm. is, is pretty massive for right, how right. small we are, right? We're still growing. I mean, imagine you got Daniel Alonzo, man. How'd you yeah. end up doing that, man? <laughs> <laughs> because we were at someone else's. Yes, Because exactly. we were at Sam's. You know what I mean? Because the referral, the, the network is there. But what's interesting is the way I got in front of people like you is people ask me all the time, how'd you do it? It's actually very simple. I literally just admitted that I'm broke. I was like, hey, I'm broke. I'm new. Look, I, I, t- I tell people that all the time. Yeah. I mean, like, because we recruit. I mean, I'm yeah. a recruiter. I mean, we yeah, recruit yeah. 300 people a month in my organization. Uh, we help, you know, 500 families a month in our organization. And when you are a recruiter, if somebody wants to be a better recruiter, be honest with the people. 100%. Tell them you're broke, man. Yeah. Tell them like, look, that's why I'm, I joined the business is because I, I see a better life. I see a better future. I see people something feel better. like they want to help yes, you. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like I was never afraid to, to, you know, once I started figuring out what to say and what to do, I would tell people, look, I'm 21. I really need your help. Would you give me 10 minutes just to show you what I'm doing? I'm just trying to get my thing going right now. You say that's that. It. I was in the cybersecurity that's space it. with my dad for a minute and, uh, Older dudes all the time. The way I would get in front of the door, hey man, I'm 21. That's it. They're like, you are? Let's talk. What are you that's doing it. here? That's it. What the that's heck? It. And so I, for everybody that's watching, seriously, like listen to this. If you're young and you want to kill it, just admit where you are. Like accept the fact. Like it's actually like, don't very try to play this like, oh, this I'm fake, rich and yeah, hell you know, no. go take it's, pictures in front of Ferraris and shit like that. Bro. Yeah, no, no. It's stressful. Yeah, how, how long can you keep that up? Exactly. Yeah. And why are you doing that? Right. Like. What the heck is the point of that? I mean, my brand is built off of the idea of being against the grain. Right. Like that's literally what my brand's all about. Mm-hmm. I go on video and I talk about the crap that I go through. That's it. I don't tell people, hey, I made a million bucks. Or right. hey, I, cl-. I tell people, guys, the way, it's, the, 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 the hardcore stuff that I had to go through to get here, that's what matters. That's it. And, but that's my, that's my formula. Like accept where you are and you'd be shocked on how people react. I'm telling you the way I book guests when I first started is by telling them we're new. Mm. But I'm a hustler. And but I'm trust me, you're gonna love our content. Like, and I was like, and they would be like, Are you sure? I'd be like, no, 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 you're gonna, you're you you're gonna, and I like they wouldn't respond to me. I'd go back at them, go back at them, go back. And Patrick took me about eight months to book. I didn't stop. I didn't stop. I texted him, texted him, texted him, texted him, texted him, all the way to a point where it's like, okay, okay, fine. Here's my assistant's number, text him. He actually kind of like gave in. And what's so funny is when he walked in through the door when we were there, he gave us this look of like, 
how the hell did I get close to this? Because he's never been on a single small podcast ever. Right. right. He usually goes on like bigger platforms, mm-hmm. which makes sense. The guy's killing it. You know, he deserves his like his 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 hustle. But the biggest lesson I learned then is if you admit where you are and you're truthful to yourself, other people will see that. Right. And they'd be willing to help you out. Because at the end of the day, everyone who successful, they didn't start with money. I mean, yeah, you got those people who was born rich, but most people that are legit hustlers, they came from nothing. Right. So when they see someone who's really willing to put in the work and admits to where they are and it's just like, hey, please just help me. I'll do whatever I can. Right, right. Then they're in. Right. I literally like, it's as simple, like the way I get mentors is, listen, hey man, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very straightforward. I will do anything, anything. To provide value for you, all I need is like an hour of your time every two weeks. Can you do that? And I literally sometimes would go overboard. Like, like we're like uh, we got a couple people that we're working with right now. It's a value trade, right? Uh, one of one of these guys is, is he's training my sales team, and in return we cr- we create content for him so, left and right. Overboard, we go overboard, and he goes overboard for us because he's at the beginning he was like a little ah oh, these guys like one of those other dudes, but then he started to realize that wait these guys are actually legit. Right. Like they're putting in their work, their integrity is high, they're keeping their word. Okay, cool. Now all of a sudden he comes to our office. In the beginning it was like video video calls. Now every Thursday we have we're part of his like appointments, that's it. and he he charges like ten grand. Right, I got him for free. That's it. You know what I mean? And it's like it's it's um. I know I'm going on this little rant, but I get fired up about this because like no, a lot. I, I just think, look, I mean, integrity is everything. I yeah. mean, you know, you're you're you know building trust with people, yeah. and I think especially newer people in the any business, the new people that are just starting out, they're they they flake a lot. They don't do time. what they say they're going to do. Time. They they don't manage their time. Yeah. They're not organized. Yeah, I'll be so there at ten thirty. Show up at eleven. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and that's that's yeah. the biggest mistake that newer people make. Because I mean, especially in my business, I mean, we're dealing with people's money. Yeah. I mean, we we, we can invest millions of dollars for people, and th- there is no joke. This is serious business. Any business, and you need to yeah. do what you say you're going to do. And look, I used to, I used to show up to people's appointments, and I would sometimes be there a half an hour early just to make sure that I didn't get hit with traffic. Because you know, you go the way, to LA. The way I, the way I call like it is, is, is ten minutes early, you're late. Yeah, yeah. I'm, ten, I'm ten minutes always, early, you're late. always, yeah. always. Uh, I was early. I was I was you know there for that client when I was supposed to be there, and, and I just built a lot of trust, even with my agents, uh, as far as from a leadership standpoint. From as as far as my agents, I was always teaching and training and coaching them leadership. Leadership is everything. If you're going to build an organization, you're going to build a big brand, a big business. You better be a leader, and leadership is 100% trust from the people that you're leading. And if they don't trust you because you're always late, you don't show up, you're not there, you don't do what you say you're gonna do, you know, pretty much you're, you're it, not it, gonna it, have a business. It'll eventually kill you. It, it'll eventually die, mm-hmm. absolutely. So my man, it's uh, it's been an hour. Can't believe that. Yeah, yeah I can't believe that. I, I love podcasting. I can get like, I can go for hours on hours on some <laughs> sessions and I'm like, all right, I gotta respect the person's time. So yeah. where, where can people find you if they wanna reach out to you and do you provide coaching for anybody or is it like a thing that you kind of like do it under whoever works for you or how does that work? Yeah, so uh, anybody can get a hold of me um, at Daniel Lonzo with a Z and I'm drinking a coconut so you'll know it's me. And uh, <laughs> and, and so so Instagram is is the best place to DM me. Sure. And Facebook is so, so many ways to figure out Facebook, but I do do a coaching program. It's called Wealth on the Beach Club. Oh, it's so like the podcast. It's this like the podcast. The, the podcast is Wealth on the Beach podcast and then Wealth on the Beach Club. So people sign up. I do a weekly every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I do a coaching session. So one half an hour is a lesson and then one half an hour is Q&A. So they can ask me whatever they want. I teach any any profession, any type of person. I'm teaching leadership. But the main, the main, main goal for me is to teach people how to build massive passive residual income so that they can have freedom and choices and options. So if somebody's listening right now and they're like, I kind of like that dude and I like his life. I like the freedom that he has. I want that to be where I'm at. Then they need to connect with me because, you know, because I can teach them exactly word for word, step by step, exactly what I did and how I did it. 100%. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and I'll do it for, and it's not very expensive. So I'm not charging 10 grand or anything like that. This is something that I'm doing. God honest, man, I really am doing as a 100% service to the world 
because I want to make a difference, man. I, look, sure. I'm not I'm not your average social media guy that's trying to you know do a coaching program and charge ten grand. I'm not doing that. That's just not my deal because I already have a business that pays me a lot of money. I'm very financially free. I want to dig into all these people that really have been misguided, and I think a lot of them have been misguided by a lot of fluff by a lot of bullshit, by a lot of people that don't, that have never done anything, that they don't know what they're talking about. There's too much nonsense. That's it. You have to filter it. And and so if you talk to me, like you're going to, you know, I'm going to give you the no bullshit, raw, in your face, straight out. You I mean, you could tell us from this podcast you're like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you don't, I mean, I've answered every one of your questions, man, straight Straight up, up with even more detail probably than most. But I do that because I just, I'm a regular guy, man. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm some celebrity or something. I'm a regular dude. I got a family. I got a great, you know, family and kids and everything. And and I just feel like I want to give back. I want to make a difference. I think that's the problem with society is that we've put set levels. We're all human. Yeah, absolutely. We were all created by one creator, whether you believe in that or not. We were all created by one thing. All right, let's put it like that. I'm Muslim, so I believe truly in God, right? Yeah, so yeah, I, we're all created by God. And at the end of the day, we're human. So. And it's interesting because religiously speaking, and I'll end it at this, we actually believe in community big time right. where you got to help and you got to like, you know, pass down the wealth. You right. got to give donations. You got to assist. However, even as us Muslims, it's very unfortunate that we have kind of split. And it's not even just religiously. It's like you see that in everywhere. There's yeah. low class, middle class. I'm like, what the hell is that? Right. Celebrity, this guy, that guy. Why does that matter? At the end of the day, like, for example, the celebrity just so happens to work in a field that makes his name popular, her right, name popular. Right, it doesn't right. make them better. Right, right. They actually are probably living a much worse life than you. At hey, the end of they day. are. They yeah. are. I, I guarantee you that because I know a lot of celebrities and I, lo- I know a lot of athletes and their lives are not as good as you think they are. Yeah. And uh, and I mean, come on. I mean, we're talking a lot of them don't see their families ever. So let me tell you something, man. We got it. We got the best thing going for us right now. Um, I've uh, I've been very, very fortunate, and lucky to help a lot of people. And I want to hopefully uh, meet some of the people that, you know, because I think maybe maybe I can make a difference. man. Sure, man. So, Definitely. Hey, look forward to working together. All right, brother. Thank, thank, you, thank you so, so much, much for being on the show. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.